Welcome everyone. Today we have a patch review for the July 21st patch for the Nerf of Pipe Modules and Arc Warden. Oh, is it a buff? Let's have a look. First, in the general overview, we can see that the Thunder Lizards have not been nerfed. We were hoping that they get changed a little bit. We can see that the Desperate Measure is not applying to summons before, but now it will be. So this item might be a little stronger, but as a tier 5 item, we'll really see it. So it's a minimal change. Lastly, we can see that the heroes are not targeting summons with their abilities. So what that means is heroes like Tiny tend to avoid a summon train and runs for other heroes, so he just won't toss the train. Now that that's fixed, it's a slight buff to most single target heroes. I mean, it might not be a buff to Lena, but it will be a buff to Tiny for sure. So let's keep that in mind. Most of the general is going to be more for user interface, so we'll go through the hero changes for that. And of course, we expected Ark Warden to be nerfed. But as I was reading the patch notes, I was like, wait a minute, are they buffing him? <laughs> Let's have a look. So yeah, Ark Warden got an attack speed buff. The quicker attack speed you are, the more attacks you do. So what that means is his attack speed is not fixed at 1. So that is pretty fast. The fastest being, I believe, Runner and Jaro at 1.11. So he's decently fast. And that one, I saw maximum mana change from 100 to 0. That means he has no mana cost. I was wondering if they put him as a passive. The maximum health was buffed, so 600, 700, and this is very good for the level 2 with 1400. The gold cost is increased. This is a nerf to Aquaden. He is now contesting in the purple tier 4 units range. And you know how good those tier 4 units are Disruptor, Necromancer, you know, even a Conquer is great. The draft and tiers also changed to reflect the gold cost. Of course, this is the nerf to Aquaden, but there's more there is the change to his spell. Yes, cooldown is going from 60 to 0. I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> are they doing an apple food joke? <laughs> so 0 mana cost, <laughs> 0 CD, he's going to pop things left the right. But now what it happens is Ark Warden now creates a copy of himself with the same current health. Notice this is not a full health, it's the same current health. The Ark can use, the Ark Warden clone can use all of his current items and will attempt to attack the same target. Now, when this clone dies, Ark Warden will summon a new one. Initially, I felt, hey, doesn't that mean that if you put Ark Warden in the front line, he summons one to in front of him when he's only got that space open, and then they kill this one, he summons one more, and then kill this one, he summons one more. And then, what if we have Refresher on the clone? Then what I realized is the clone is likely not going to cast the spell of resummoning, but the clone will use the item. Notice that it didn't say it will cast the spell. So... The Refresher won't be useful on the clone, but things that still is one-time use, like Dagon, things that are like Mechanism and Pipe can still be multiplied. And this is interesting, because the positioning of Arc Order is going to be very important. And we'll be testing this in today's stream as well. Now, we'll be touching on the Pipe Domios, the changes to that after the look through all of the other units that are changed. Let's look at Clockwork. Clockwork and Tinker had some changes, much needed, because they're three cost units. Clockwork has high armor to start with, very good. So we want Clockwork to be tanky, because at the three cost level, you're facing at least six units that's, you know, fighting this side in the back line, side in the front line. If your front line unit is not tanky enough as a three cost, it's not justifiable. So more health to clock and more armor to clock, that's perfect. We're going to have a scrappy build very soon for you guys. Medusa, much needed buff as well. The Hunters have been suffering quite a bit, but there are two buffs to the Hunter in this patch. The first buff is that Medusa's base damage is increased, and this deals with the minimal and maximal, so she is going to do at least, I think, 20% more DPS, and this was interesting because she feels very weak at one star, especially that, you know, Hunters are pretty much very weak back then, so this is perfect for Medusa. Next thing to look at is Tinker. Tinker has better attack speed, low armor, more damage. So what that is reflecting is, although Tinker have a low armor, he takes more damage with enemies, you know, no more attack. That means he gains mana fast, he can cast faster. We don't necessarily need Tinker to be the frontline tank. He's likely to be the offline or in the backline. If that is the case, and half of the time Tinker will have the little scrappy armor. And because he's got scrappy armor, armor is not a problem. Having more attack speed and more damage means he can cast so much faster. So this is a buff to me for both of the Scrappies, which are Clockwork and Tinker. 
trim protector. Trim protector just got buffed as well. So ranging the projectile speed increased, that means the healing speed is going to be increased. The damage of the heal and leech seed is increased. So this is reflecting that he's three cost and just, you know, his spells wasn't great. Now that if the unit dies, he no longer heals. So this is a great change as well. Of course, the druids are definitely very strong. Now, the next buff to the hunters uh, is the lichen. The lichen is changed from human warrior savage to human hunter savage. And now lichen swarfs are hunters and savages. What that means is, you know, they enjoy the savage attack bonus. They enjoy the hunter multi-attack. So ideally, this is a buff to the offensive capability of lichen individually. And also this is a buff to the hunters because there's more hunter to pick from. There's one star Joranger, two star Beastmaster Windrunner, three star Lycan, and you know, there is a four star Tide. Oh, Tide Hunts is not one anymore. <laughs> there's a four star Windrunner. And lastly, there's, you know, the Medusa. And also the three star Sniper as well. So cost, cost, <laughs> three cost Sniper. So what that means is there's one more hunter to pick from. It's much easier to find the six hunters. The little bizarre thing is that no of the hunters are human. As a human, Lycan goes into the hunters that his human passive will not be used. But overall, I believe this is a great buff to the hunter. It's a small nerf to the warrior, which is much needed because there's one less warrior. We can still run Lycan in a warrior lineup with the savages, but now it just seems a little different. But, which is okay, we only need three warriors. So I believe this is an overall good change, but like logically, it seems weird that. Uh, Lycan is now a hunter, while a tight hunter is not a hunter, while a beast master is not a savage because <laughs> he's supposed to be the master of beast. But let me know in the comments of what you guys think. So Juggernaut. Juggernaut's attack speed is improved actually, so each level he levels up, he has quicker attack speed. Now Juggernaut's damage is also improved at level 2 range and level 3 range. What that means is it's making him more viable. If you find a brownie with Juggernaut, he is more potent. Let's look at item change. There is only one item change, which seems to be breaking the matter, and this is focused on the pipe modules. The item on change is the HP difference from 300 to fixed to 300. What that means is if you have a one tier one front of creation, it's same as all other tier in terms of health. The maximum damage is also reduced, reduced by 10 per level. But notice that they haven't changed the armor of the Eidolons, which still have 20. So the usefulness of Fraught of Creation is still very much there. But of course, without enough Arc Warden summons, you won't get that much Eidolons. So in return, this item is still great, but it's no longer a must pick if you pick the, you know, a normal build without Pinomials. So you don't have to pick this one, then force into Pinomials. Lastly, of course, the changes we'll all be waiting for. Our friendly assassins and melee units and range units together is sick of getting disarmed. Especially my two-star troll warlord. <laughs> He's like 10% and he just get disarmed every first hit. So level 1 power modules now have a 25% chance of slowing their attack speed by 50 each attack. This effect apply at the start of the attack and last for the duration of the attack. So the attack animation and how the heroes are attacking is slowed. So I need to be testing this, but I believe if you have played Dota 2 with Enchantress with Untouchable, it works before your attack land and it finishes after attack lands. This is still effective. I believe 25% is okay, but maybe a little too low, but I'm not sure. Pinobius has been super strong lately. So again, at level two, this will be for the entire team, I believe. So enemies attack friendly units now have 25% of the 50 attack slow. To translate how good 50 attack slow is, if we have four chores, we get 30% increased attack. So that's 30 attack. Now this is basically reducing your attack speed by close to eight troll alliance. So that is very big and it can still be useful. We're going to be testing this. Now keep in mind the pine modules are still the defensive alliance, which is great. We can use pine module mage still. We can use the warrior mage. We can use you know, some form of mage that uses the defensive capability. So we're going to be testing this out as well. Now overall, 
I believe this might be a slight buff to Arcwarden in the sense that he instantly summons a clone without needing of mana, and there's always opportunities to be creative with this one, so we can't wait to be testing those. I can't wait to show you guys a fun build with Arcwarden even after the patch change. The thing to keep in mind now that he's four cost, it's likely we won't get him to three star, so it's okay like everything else, and I like how the two two star stats is pretty much increased. So in general, I'm looking forward to the Scrappies and we'll be having a Scrappy build for you guys very soon. Thank you so much everyone for watching this patch review. We'll be having builds and guides adjusted in this patch. I believe this is a good change per modules so that the other race and alliance can come and shine in this particular patch. We'll be having more guides like the Scrappy and Assassin guides for you guys very soon. Please subscribe for those guys on my YouTube channel. Please also turn the little bell on for the notifications as we post new content. Please follow and subscribe to support me on Twitch. Thank you so much, everyone.